Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a place called Pilsden Pen in Dorset. It's about seven miles northwest of Bridport and nine miles southwest of Crewkern. And I'll be walking a roughly four mile circular route with a small detour. I'll be wandering lonely as a cloud up a hill called Pilsden Pen, exploring a hill fort checking out a house that was once the home of William Wordsworth, going along sections of three major long distance paths, checking out a sweet little church at Pilsden, and of course we'll get some stunning views. Now I'm filming at the beginning of June. It is a glorious day. The sun's out, the clouds burning off. There is a bit of a, a wind, but it's a, a nice cooling down wind. It should be perfect conditions for walking. Do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car at a small lay-by on the B3164 at the foot of Pilsden Pen, just uh, at the bottom of Cockpit Hill. Speaking of Pilsden Pen, well, it's just behind me here. And it looks like we've got an uphill start to our walk. Now, Pilsden Pen is the second highest point in Dorset at 909 foot above sea level. Now Arthur Mee in his book King's England Dorset stated that it was the highest point in Dorset but since his book was published in 1939 they remeasured Lewiston Hill which is just to the east and that's 915 foot above sea level. halfway up our ascent of Pilsden Pen so I thought I'd just have a little breather and show you the view so this is looking to the south it's still quite hazy so hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm seeing and just about see the, the blue sea and the gap there and just uh, slowly panning around this very much a typical Dorset rolling landscape I can just about make out um, Colmer's Hill with the little uh, bunch of trees on top. We were walking there a few days ago and then just panning around this is looking over to the east. Of course this time of year all the fields very lush and green. nearly at the top now and you can see this ditch in front of me and indeed it's a, an Iron Age hill fort although the age is uncertain and it's one of four hill forts overlooking the western end of the Marshwood Vale. I think there are something like 35 hill forts in Dorset, not 100% sure. And there are two Neolithic to Bronze Age burial mounds within the fort. But the hill fort today has a single entrance and it's a, an oval shaped enclosure of about 2.8 hectares and it's protected by a couple of massive banks and ditches with a small counterscarp. But they've been quarrying and ploughing over the years uh, so there are now quite a few other entrances. And it was probably still occupied up to the first century. I mean I guess it was inhabited by the, the local Durachigs tribe until the Romans came. Now there's evidence of a square structure in the, the middle of the fort. Now many thought it was a Roman temple, but archaeologists now think it was a medieval pillow mound, uh, sort of man-made mounds for breeding rabbits.
Well, we've made it to the top. <laughs> it is windy up here, so hopefully you're hearing me over the audio. There is a trig point up here that has been bagged in the customary manner. Let's have a little wander around the top of the fort. This is on the sort of northwestern end of the hill fort. I tell you, as hill forts go, it's uh, quite an impressive one. I'll give it seven, eight out of ten. Still, some very impressive uh, ditches and banks. But uh, I keep going on about the views. But say so this is looking to the north, and uh, it really is quite uh, breathtaking on a day like today. Well, we had a lot of fun exploring the uh, hill fort, but we're going to leave that now, continuing heading uh, westwards, and we're going to join up with the Wessex Ridgeway, which is that 136 mile long distance path that starts at Marlborough in Wiltshire and ends at Lyme Regis on the western edge of Dorset. Well, I've just come to the edge of a field uh, with a gate, and uh, there's a way mark there confirming that we're still on the Wessex Ridgeway which is just as well because I've come across a field and there's been no semblance whatsoever of a footpath but it, uh, it definitely is there. It's one of those Dorset footpaths if you know what I mean. Well, this is as far west as we're going to go on the route, so one look over in that direction because now we uh, start heading, uh, well, initially southwards and then uh, start heading back eastwards again. I tell you, it's absolutely glorious now, and now we're in a little bit of uh, cover from the wind it's uh, really quite warm just coming down this track alongside a hedge and this time of year just full of wild flowers with purples and whites so peaceful as well now I've stopped for a little breather and also to tell you about uh, something that well I don't think we're going to be able to see but I want to tell you about it anyway and it's sort of roughly uh, behind me over my right shoulder and it's uh, race down or race down lodge or race down house in the past and I think it's sort of in the dip behind those trees I'm gonna to have to put up a map as I say we're not gonna be able to see it but the reason I've mentioned it is uh, because the great English poet William Wordsworth lived there for a couple of years. Um, he was there from 1795 to 1797 when he was 25 years old and he rented it with his sister Dorothy. He'd been living in London where he wasn't too happy and wanted to live in the countryside. Now none of his best work was really done here. Uh, he wrote his only play, The Borderers, which is a, a tragedy in five acts here, but it wasn't accepted for the stage initially, and indeed it only was published in 1842, some 46 years after it was written. But he would walk for two hours every morning around here, and often he would compose poetry out loud. And so Basically, his behaviour aroused the suspicion of locals who believed he was casting a spell over their livestock. The three recurring themes of the poetry that he wrote whilst he was here were nature, rural poverty and the effects of war. And he left here to go to Germany and return to England in 1799. 
Of course, he was probably most associated with the, the Lake District, where uh, he wrote his uh, I Wandered uh, Lonely as a Cloud, or Daffodil's Poem, in 1807. And it was inspired by a walk he took with his sister around Glencoyne Bay in Ullswater in the Lake District. And Wordsworth died in 1850. He was 80 years old, and for the last seven years of his life, he was Poet Laureate. Well, a quick update on the route. I say we've been heading eastwards following a lovely footpath along the side of a field with uh, Pilsen Pen to our left. We've crossed the B3164. We're now on the Jubilee Trail, which is that uh, 90 mile long distance path that goes from Ford Abbey in Somerset all the way to Bockerley Dyke on the Dorset Hampshire border. It was opened in 1995 to celebrate the Diamond Jubilee of the Ramblers Association. Oh, <laughs> it really is quite enchanting on this little footpath. So we're heading towards Pilsden, a little hamlet, uh, for some exploration. But as we go, look at this, we've got what cow parsley, buttercups, uh, a few foxgloves and uh, oh, all sorts really. Quite delightful. Well, I simply had to stop to show you this view. And, uh, uh, tractor there busy cutting haylage. And then just uh, panning around this Pilsden and the hill fort where we started and our, our cars probably parked on the ridge there but we've got a little bit of downhill to do to check out Pilsden. Oh wow! <laughs> Look at this and it's downhill. I said <laughs> not looking forward to the uphill bit going back but uh, so there's the little footpath obviously we're for going to follow through the field but oh, you have to keep stopping every five ten minutes and just taking it all in what a lovely day for a ride well, I love your horse. <laughs> now you've got to give a canter up there. <laughs> oh, well, she has as well. Oh, what a fantastic place to come for a ride. Lovely, safe ground. Oh, I'm very envious. <laughs> well, there's just enough space for Logan to get down and have a dip and have a drink of water to cool down which is just what the doctor ordered is that nice <laughs> come on then good boy ah now this is what I wanted to come and see St Mary's Church at Pilsden formerly the parish church and now a private chapel it's got late 14th century origins with major restorations in 1830 and 1875 and it consists of a nave, chancel, north vestry and south porch 
and it's got a bell coat with the, the one bell which was added in the 19th century. The church was declared redundant in 1983 and the following year it was bought by the Pilsden community and they have four services a day, three of which are in the church. Well we'll have a, a quick peep inside the font there which I believe is Norman. There's the uh, single Sally and then just quickly just turning round to the right a quite magnificent stained glass window above the altar there and um, rather than seats and, and pews it looks like it's uh, bales of straw and cushions either side. What a delightful little church. Now just next to the church is Pilsden Manor. Now Sir Hugh Wyndham, who lived between 1602 and 1684 and was a royalist judge, lived here at the time of the Battle of Worcester in 1651. Charles II fled the battlefield and embarked on an escape across southern England that lasted weeks. Now at one point his pursuers thought he was here and they came and ransacked the house, suspecting that one of the four ladies found here was in fact Charles in disguise. Actually, Charles was hiding at Sir Hugh's nephew's house in Trent, just to the north. The house itself was built in the early 17th century, and it was bought by what became the Pilsen community in 1958, and uh, is a Christian retreat centre. Uh, Anglican in foundation, it offers a, a refuge to people in crisis and there can be anything up to 25 folk here on average at any one time and it's very much a place of prayer, home and comfort. Whew. Well we're now on the homeward leg going uphill from Pilsen back up to the car park that's just below Pilsen Pen and we're on the Monarch's Way which is that uh, 625 mile long distance path that represents the escape route of Charles II after his defeat at the Battle of Worcester in 1651. And the route goes from Worcester to uh, Bristol, then Yeovil and then Shoreham. And I know we're definitely on the Monarch's Way because just met a lovely lady, Nancy, who lives locally and uh, she was going around with her hammer. It was her job uh, making sure all the Monarch's Way signs are still there and in order. She had a lovely black Labrador with her, so nice to have met you, Nancy. Right, let's uh, kick on with the last leg. Wow! What an amazing statue that's just stuck by the uh, public footpath here. <laughs> Some sort of unicorn. I wonder what the story behind that is, but uh, it's got a fantastic view, hasn't it? Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. We've had a super walk today. <laughs> Unfortunately, no pub, so we're going to have to see if we can find one on the way back. But what a beautiful setting, and to finish the walk with Pilsen Pen behind us. So until we meet again, thanks for watching, and cheerio. Uh, good boy. <laughs>